The Bristol Sound and Vision Show, 2008. Welcome back to our coverage from this year's Bristol Sound and Vision Show, which took place in February. In this episode, we attended the Dolby High Dynamic Range TV demonstration, along with other members of the UK press, to see just what it was all about. A lot of people don't really associate Dolby with video, um, so you know, really the the first thing to do is, or the first thing that we, that we did there was um, to really make people aware of the fact that Dolby has been involved with video for quite a long time. Um, so in fact, Ray Dolby, um, our founder, um, started off his, his research career looking at video noise reduction, um, and that led to uh, the development of his, of his audio noise reduction technology. Um, and also, a little bit more recently, uh, with the Dolby Digital Cinema. Um, so for about four or five years now, we've actually had uh, a lot of expertise in video in-house developing this end-to-end -end digital cinema system. Um, so for us, the, uh, the, the most apparent difference is that we're now bringing video technologies into the consumer domain. Um, so the first entry here is uh, two technologies, Dolby Contrast and Dolby Vision, which make use of the high dynamic range video technology. The first thing I, th I think to mention about this is that this is a, a groundbreaking uh, technique for uh, showing images on LCD screens. Um, one of the, the things that, that Dolby are traditionally associated with in audio is the ability to um, improve quality where quality is an issue on the media itself. So if we think of analog tape, um, things like noise reduction are a way of improving the quality. But also we're about trying to uh, improve the realism and immersion of the entertainment experience, so things like Dolby Digital uh, surround sound. Um, I think the high dynamic range uh, video technology does a very similar thing for the LCD uh, display market. Um, by improving the dynamic range of the video uh, and by increasing the contrast ratio that we can get by using uh, Dolby's uh, local dimming technique, this local modulation of LED backlights as opposed to the cathode ray uh, tube backlight. Lighting, uh, we can achieve we can achieve a much better quality video image uh, and a much more realistic and immersive experience, uh, even when using a, 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 a traditional LCD screen. So, Dolby's local modulation technique, this LED backlighting local dimming technique, allows us to get much truer blacks and much brighter brights. If you think about traditional LCD panels with the cathode ray. Um, backlight units, the image is very often quite dull, quite flat, quite two-dimensional. The whites are very often crushed, so there's not much detail in the bright areas of the image. And the same with the dark images, the true black becomes a grey. But with Dolby Vision and Dolby Contrast, um, we're able to achieve a much better contrast ratio that's more true to life. So the blacks are true black and the brights are really bright and much more realistic. So the way we can achieve this improved dynamic range and this much better realistic contrast is by locally turning on and off the LEDs in the backlight unit depending on how bright the image is in the, the incoming video. So if you think about um, if there's a very bright part of the image on the screen then we can turn the LEDs that are behind that part on to full brightness and you get a, a realistic bright image. In the darker parts of the image we can scale the LED brightness down until they're off in fact and you get a true black. So it's this ability to scale the LED brightness uh, locally depending on the uh, image brightness that enables us to achieve this real um, wide dynamic range and wide contrast ratio. So within Europe um, Dolby did a, uh, a behind the scenes launch to invited partners at the IFA show in Berlin in 2008. Um, in 2007, sorry, in September. Um, since then, um, during this quarter, we've been working with Sim2 um, to bring a, a, a real-life production prototype to market. Uh, and we expect that that will be on the market in, uh, in the coming few months. In line with this time scale, we, we're also uh, introducing our own development kit. So these are the tools that enable our partners, whether it's the, uh, the people that develop the video 
video processor chips or the TV manufacturers to allow them to integrate Dolby's high dynamic range technologies into their products. So that is coming uh, during this current quarter um, and we will be supporting these manufacturers in integrating that into their products. Um, in terms of specific timelines, we're pretty much reliant on the, the timelines of our partners. Um, so from our point of view, we will support them to get it to market as quickly as possible, but the exact time frame is really dependent on the, the time frame of, of our partners' uh, you know, product schedules. So I think Dolby's high dynamic range technology will be successful because in general the industry is moving towards an LED backlight solution. Um, LEDs are coming down in cost over time. They offer benefits uh, even outside of image quality such as better efficiency because of the fact that they're only turning on when necessary uh, and other environmental benefits to do with the reduction of harmful chemicals like mercury traditionally associated with CCFL backlight units. Um, the fact that there's now the possibility to control each of these light elements individually to obtain a much more realistic, dramatic, immersive um, uh, LCD image means that the manufacturers, so the TV brands, now have a really, really striking and dramatic um, differentiator when they're trying to sell their products to the public. Um, so I think that the benefits of moving towards LED uh, backlight technology coupled with Dolby's know-how and the processing involved to drive those LEDs um, will, will you know, really make this technology a success in the market.